at last night. People have been writing me like someone dropping bombs. Hmm. One of my perspective on Benny Hinn's repentance. Hmm. And as I say before, say sad now again, I can't criticize no man when he repents. If that man repents, fine. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, is that repentance acceptable to God? That's it. Let us just consider Benny Hinn. Well, he can afford to stop preaching prosperity. Notice my language. He can afford it. Yeah. Ain't nothing broke about the hen. The hen been plucking your wallets for over 40 years or more. That's right. Benny got plenty. Yeah. Through the years, accumulated millions millions, millions of dollars. So now, let us remember, he said he was called and sent by God. And through the years on television, he would tell the people, the Lord spoke to him and told him for you to give this amount. He said the prosperity message came to him from God. Lord. Well, why are you saying this, Pastor Jennings? This is what make me not question his repentance. You can repent all you want, fine. The question is, is that repentance acceptable to God? That's right. Why you say that, Pastor Jennings? Because God says if you blaspheme Blasphemy. against the Holy Ghost, That's and right. the Holy Ghost is God, That's right. you cannot be forgiven in this life, nor the life to come. Now, That's right. Benny Hinn said that the prosperity message, message came from God. Yeah. Lie against the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Benny Hinn said so many times that I can't count. The Lord said to him to tell the audience, if you give this amount, God will do this. He would tell you, this is from God. Yeah. Every time he said it, it was a lie. This is from God. Lie. Yeah. This is from God. Lie. This is from God. So his blaspheme was repetitious. That's right. Someone says, suppose you've done it ignorantly. A man that robbed is not a dumb thief. There's not a prosperity liar out here that don't know that message did not come from God. Amen. Amen. Jesus didn't preach it. Prophets didn't preach it. No. None of the apostles preached it. Amen. We've been preaching for years that the greatest wealth is not money. Mm -hmm. It's not a house. Mm -hmm. It's not a car. Right. I can, listen, if someone gave me a Bentley today, I can drive that Bentley like I'm driving a Volkswagen. Amen. I can step in it, Gino, and come out, Gino. Yeah. I won't step in it. Gino and come out, Sir Jennings. <laughs> Before I get in, if I'm, if I'm gonna ask, you got any mustard? <laughs> and then when I come out, I'm not gonna shake and say, where's the grandpapa? <laughs> <laughs> what you own should not change you. Right. When what you own changed you to become arrogant, self-righteous, self-centered, that is proof you cannot handle what you have. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Right. Brothers and sisters that been in the truth of God for years never saw us get uplifted how things have grown from a small group to thousands. That's right. We have been the same. That's right. Why? This is not Geno Jennings' work. This is the Lord's work. So how can I get high-minded over something that's not mine? That's right. That's right. Listen at this. For we brought Give chapter and verse again. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and we're at verse 7. We brought nothing. Into this world. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing yeah. into this world. And it is certain. It is certain. We can carry nothing out. It is certain. So if the hen... Truly repent and is sorry for lying all those years. 
and from stealing from the people, but let's call it for what it is, then let me say to you what Jesus said. Sell all you have and give it to the poor. Now when Jesus heard these things, if you stole and you truly repent for what you stole and you still possess that stolen merchandise, give it up, give it back to all those you stole it from. Am I right, I said? You viewers were suckered into buying him jets. You viewers were suckered into buying him yachts. You viewers were suckered into buying him mansions. And he put the name of Jesus Christ upon all what he possessed and said it was God's will. Right. Which is blatant blasphemy. Blasphemy. Okay. Amen. So the question is, did God accept it? Yeah. The social media is buzzing everywhere. Is this repentance real or fake? Who cares? I want to know, is God accepting it? Accepting. And for me to know, I got to take it to the book. That's right. So being that you done stole all this from poor, hard-working people and they made you rich, Amen. sell it and give them all back theirs. That's right. Sell all. If I stole Shade's car and then I repent for stealing Shade's car, I have no business still driving around in Shade's car. That's right. For if I repent, I have to give Shade back what's his. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know this message is going to put fire on the thousands of folk. <laughs> Listen at this. For we brought nothing into this world. You brought nothing here. And it is certain we can carry you nothing can't out. You can take nothing out. And, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Having food and raiment, therewith, let us be Content. content. Let us be thankful. Yeah. Nothing wrong with striving to work, but it is a sin not to be rich. Listen at what I'm telling you. It's not a sin to be rich because the Lord can make you rich. The Lord made Solomon rich. But it is a sin to strive to be rich. That's right. For the scripture speaking, it speaks against striving to to be rich. Why? Why do God don't want us to strive to be rich? Because that will become our center focus. Yeah. If I got to lay out of church, deliberately miss church when I can be there, because I want to keep up with that group of people and that group of people, and I want people to look at me as something more than what I think I am. Yeah. That's right. Labor not to be rich. Do you hear? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and at verse if 4. If anyone working just to be rich, you violate God's law. Yes. That's right. Why do God don't want you to work to be rich? To be because rich. God knows that riches will hold your attention. That's right. You are miss church yeah. to make that dollar. Oh, yeah. You are, you are, you are, just stay out. Stay out. Because then the dollar becomes the prime priority. That's and right. if you love that money too much, you will start breaking laws and you will start That's going right. behind the scenes, breaking God's law and moral law. That's right. That's right. Just to make that money. That's right. And then after you make that money, when you stand before God, it'll be a witness against you in judgment. That's right. Nobody going to get away. Nobody. Nobody. Glory to God. Listen at this. In Proverbs chapter 23 and at verse 4. Yes. Labor not to be rich. Well, that alone crushed the prosperity message. Yeah. We're supposed to labor for souls. That's right. Not labor just to get rich. That's right. For our focus should be God and the salvation of self. Amen. 
Our focus should never be wealth. If God bless you with a Bentley, fine. If God bless you with a rose, fine. If God bless you with a house and this auditorium is the size of your bathroom. And this stage is the size of your tub. Lord. That's fine. That's you. Flow around. <laughs> but if anything you have, even down to your husband or wife, if they change you in any way that caused you to question the reality of God and now your commitment and your loyalty to God is no more at its height but now it starts to drop, drop, drop. And when it drop, you drop. That's right. Because the mind you had started to be replaced by Colonel Folly. That's right. The objective of the church and the first priority of the church is to be saved. Yeah. Amen. To the degree that if you don't have it, yeah. you still want to be saved. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? Labor not to be rich. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Cease from your own carnal way of thinking. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Uh -huh. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away <laughs> as an eagle toward heaven. Why? Because many people, when they get rich, they lose control. That's right. And sometimes you can tell when a person is not used to money because they change. Oh, yeah. No brother should stop acting like a real brother because you got a little confetti. Amen. Sister won't speak to you now because you in a bigger house. You fool. That's right. Bigger house, more space to die in. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. I'm so glad God made me like this. And not only that, I was raised with this type of teaching from home. Amen. My mother and father, by God's permission, laid a good foundation. And my father instilled in us work. Yeah. Because even scripturally, laziness is a sin. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It's like children. Having a car is just a privilege. It isn't something that your mother and father got to give you. Like cable and satellite. <laughs> That's right. Those are just privileges. That's right. That's right. If you can't pay that bill, some folks say, well, I can't live without it. You didn't always have it. When I came up, we didn't have it. It wasn't around. <laughs> we had rabbit ears. <laughs> the rabbit ears antenna. That's right. And when the antenna wouldn't work, you get some aluminum foil. <laughs> and if that didn't work, you made the antenna out of that wire hanger. <laughs> and when that, you, you move the wire hanger, you put that in sync with the foil, <laughs> bam, you got a picture. <laughs> That's right. Everybody cannot handle much. And this is why God don't give everybody much. No. Because some can handle it and be humble. Yeah. And then some get it and it makes them mean. That's right. Arrogant. That's right. Spiteful. Mm -hmm. Self righteous. Yeah. Conceited. Yeah. Amen. They want you to notice what they have. They that trust in their wealth. My, 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 my. In the book of Psalms 49 and at verse 6. Listen. They that trust in their wealth. They that trust in their wealth. And boast themselves. Boast themselves. In the multitude of their riches. In the multitude of what they have. None of them can by any means redeem his brother. That's right. You can't redeem your brother. Nor give to God a, a ransom for him. Listen. If your brother died, you can't get him back with it. That's right. That's right. I know millionaires personally. And the reason why I had the chance to know them because millionaires watch the telecast. Many come to the church. 
uh, WBC boxers and NBA players and all of that stuff come to the church and visit. I meet them in the airport. I even met some wrestlers from WWE. I'm yeah. in the airport waiting to catch a plane, and people are walking up to this one fella, asked for his autograph and whatnot, and you pay him no mind to me. You just don't want to jump on the mat. He knew who I was. Wonderful. He said, we watch you in the locker room. Wow. <laughs> Seen him watch you on YouTube in the locker room. Wonderful. I knew he was telling the truth. He said, I love it when you do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a smackdown with Bible. <laughs> Amen. The world is distracted by materialism. Their inward thought is. Listen. Now in Psalms 49 and at verse 11. Their inward thinking. That their houses shall continue forever. They think that this stuff is going to stay here. That's right. So preachers have this cheap teaching from Satan. Right here is heaven. Yeah. If you want a slice of heaven, you can get it here. This ain't no, listen, if this is heaven, I don't want it. Don't want it. But if this was hell, <laughs> I'd take it. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? If my eternal punishment for being wrong would just stay here on earth, you know, get behind in bills once in a while, yeah. pay taxes, yeah. I'm cool with it. Cool with it. But if this is eternal life with God right here, this is miserable. That's right. You get what I'm telling you. That's right. To all of my viewers that are watching, many of you are at odds with your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, and aunts. People that you used to be close with. Y'all never was at odds until your daddy died. That's right. Or your mother died. Or your uncle died. No money should come between the love of a family. That's right. That's right. Some of them stopped speaking. Mother died, father died, grandpa died, and didn't even leave much money. Didn't even leave much land. Maybe a lot. A lot with a mule and the mule back sunk in. And they're arguing over. A lot and money yeah. cuss each other out. Yeah. Don't speak for years. Yeah. Which shows that your love for materialism is greater than your love for life. That's right. That's right. People have left things to me and my wife and my family before they died. And I would ask them, do you have children? They'd be like, yeah, Pastor James, I got children, but I don't want to leave it to them because I'm scared they're going to smoke it up or drink it up. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't waste my life being at having the children at odds with me. I deliberately just gave it to them. Someone said, you should have kept it. Well, perhaps, but I will not have my name blackened over materialism. That's right. You mean to tell me you not my brother no more mm. because you got a little bit confetti? You mean to tell me you can't speak to me no more because now you're able to afford a certain brand of suit that you used to couldn't wear? That's right. Talk to me. That's right. Don't forget how you got where you are. Amen. Be careful how you treat people as you elevate in life because you didn't get where you are on your own. That's right. There's somebody, righteous or unrighteous, aid you in your journey of accomplishment. Oh, yeah. The reason why you better be careful how you treat them because God may resurrect a situation in your life. Now you're going to need them once God plucks you off the mountain you